is on some land where the river is wide. At night I see my memory. Go ahead, we're Frenchy Ruckus. I'm Matthew. I play the guitar and sing and play harmonica and pedal steel sometimes on records and write songs. Um, I'm Davey. I play the banjo and I sing. And occasionally I play a little bit of dobro. I'm resonating with this Dobro. I'm Ryan. I play drums and only drums. <laughs> I'm Brian and I play bass once in a while. Sometimes I don't play at all. Maybe this is that. Rest ups in midnight are like friends I would say. Zach would say, Hi, I'm Zach, and I play the singing cell trumpet, uh, melodica, alto horn, euphonium, so and other assorted keyboard type instruments. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I wish he were here. He's probably upstairs lost in the mayhem. Should we describe our settings? We're in, we're in a, a Scorsese film. <laughs> no, we're in the basement of Max Bar and Lansing. About to get whacked. About to get whacked. We thought we were made men, but we walked into this room and one out of ten, something was terribly awry. Yeah, it's a bad tour for probably the last year or so now, promoting, uh, well, Dead Malls came out in July, but you guys yeah. have been, I know you've been on tour for a while now. Mm -hmm. You guys played Bonnaroo earlier this year. Was that kind of the highlight of your guys' career so far? Uh, Bonnaroo was, was a highlight. It was, it was definitely a, a new, beautiful, sweaty, overwhelming experience for us. It was really cool, but, um, but yeah, I mean, on paper, it was really important for us because um, I, I guess it was it was cool for us to be able to say that we played Bonnaroo. Um, it's a legitimate festival. Yeah, and I mean, but there there were other huge highlights. We went to Europe for a month, which was you know I, I couldn't pick a show that was like specifically a highlight over there. Everything was just gorgeous. Um, Europe it was our second time. Anything can be a highlight. It can be any little. I mean, there's a difference between like. Career, I mean, yeah. things that are just like in the business side of things, but I mean, at, at, I mean, the, whole, the worst show can be a highlight experientially, you know. There are, I mean, there are instances like of us playing to to like ten people outside on a sidewalk that like are equally as memorable as playing Bonnaroo because those experiences are just you know beautiful in their own way. So, yeah. Do you think your sound has been realized on like maybe this new record, or do you guys still think there's more to be explored? There really isn't. I certainly think yeah. So. There's not any. Hey. I mean, see that that was our sound for that period, well, <laughs> but now we've moved on. I mean, there's not really any dis like any um, criterion version of Frontier Ruckus' sound. It's a dynamic beast. So that's the most encouraging thing. If it, if it were a static uh, institution, it would be really depressing and not fun. And de uh, you know, this is kind of cliche, but any band that. Uh, is going to have a worthwhile long career it has to evolve to a degree that there's going to be no like one definition of their sound even though like fans might categorize you know like oh this is this is Wilco's best record or whatever this is their best sound I don't know it's all like so subjected to just like a base of critics and for us like Matt's already writing new songs right now that are you know fantastic and we're really excited about them so we're concentrating on the future of you know, what that's going to bring about in terms of our sound I mean most likely, there will always be the same elements. There will always be Matt's songwriting, and there will be, you know, banjo and saw, and there will be all our voices. Um, it's just a matter of using those in different ways. And like, um, for us, we try to keep it interesting, like, uh, for for ourselves, if nothing else, so we don't lose our minds playing the same kinds of things over and over again. But like, we're, we're just trying to figure out ways to take what we've been doing and like move it to some like kind of next level of, yeah. of you know I mean interest for even all, on know. a given album the sounds are very diverse from song to song and that's what we like I mean I, I, I'm obsessed with writing very different breeds of so different species of songs like there's really long songs there's really short songs there's really complex thorough dense lyrical songs and there's shorter Slightly less dense lyrical songs. <laughs> I mean, um, they're all pretty. They're, all they're pretty, all pretty thickety. But um, I mean, like I'm writing new songs now that might be a little more melodic. The chord progressions are maybe a little hookier, maybe a little more. I don't know. Just different phases, different things I'm listening to, different obsessions. Yeah. It's very whimsical in a way. The sound of the record to me, it's kind of a uh, eeriness to it, kind of an off sound to it. Um, 
It's probably because of the instrumentation, you know, like I just said. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Maybe, like, and especially today's rock bands, you know, they kind of have the same instrumentation. What do you guys, do you guys consider yourselves a rock band, quote-unquote? I mean, maybe. That's the largest umbrella. You can really mm -hmm. define anything by these days. Yeah. But in terms of something being off, I like, I mean, I kind of take that as a compliment. Um, there's um, an indelible rawness to what we like to produce, and um, it can be jarring at times, and I think... In just in natural reality, jarring things are the most real and intense and yeah. profound. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're not afraid. We don't. We don't try to to polish or shine off something that to make it less jarring or naturally raw. So, I mean, we could talk specifics about that, mm -hmm. but just in general, that's something that we actually encourage. There, there are certain elements of um, of this sound that. I get, yeah, you, like you said, they sound old, you know, and um, whether they're like more traditional or they sound like they come from an older era, um, I mean, that that comes from different perspectives, I guess. I guess kind of like the, um, uh, like Matt was saying, the raw sound, and, and then there's the banjo, which kind of um, brings people back in a certain way, and kind of, you think of a more traditional type of sound, but then there's like the interesting elements that Zach's bringing in, like the trumpet and the, and the saw, and like combining those two things um, are something, you know, that's something that uh, people always say that they really like. Like to hear like a banjo trumpet mix is, is, is really different for people. Um, so we kind of, I mean, we really pride ourselves in that, in that kind of off thing because it, it catches people's ears. Um, at least we hope it does. And, and yeah, and, um, you know, that, that's what we're going for. We, we just want to do things that are, are slightly unexpected and, um, I don't. I don't want to be a bluegrass banjo player. I want to play a banjo to um, interesting, well-written songs. Look for a trumpet and a banjo to it on the next record. <laughs> yeah, something you know, stuff like that. I mean, like multi-layered saw, like some, something like we kind of want to like. I mean, I guess we want to be experimental in a lot of ways. Take those you know? different instruments and kind of play them, play them, and use them in a way that others might not. Right. If, if possible, I mean, it's hard to do things that, that people haven't done before, but yeah. like... All um, the elements bring their own connotational luggage, that, that, I mean, just different right. subliminal kind of I mean, um, implications. Yeah. So it's the mixture of, of all these things. There are probably very few things that I could do with a banjo that hasn't been done. Like, just, just a banjo musically, there are probably very few things that I could do, but like, combining it with the other elements here, that that's, that's what we're hoping for, you know. That's what we're trying to to portray as different, I guess. So yeah. And it's not to be anachronistic or like beckoning back some bygone yeah. dust bowl time. Like and that's something we got really early on that is kind of luckily been dismissed here and there. But I mean we would love the past and we're obsessed with it, or at least me personally from a songwriting standpoint, and that's what I talk talk about but it can be as recent as recent of a past of the 90s and you know that's already a rich world of nostalgia so nostalgia is a very a very recent thing last week you know it can be brimming with nostalgia so and I you know you guys have come from the Detroit like metropolitan area and uh, you write a lot about that is why is that such an inspiration to you do you think it's the like this the world I came from and I feel like I contain it, like inside of me, all of its complexities. It's just a very, I don't know how singular it is, I'm sure there's many conditions of metropolitan areas like that across, I mean we've seen them across the country, but it's just a very complex system of intermingling municipalities and localities and little, I'm really into worlds, like these containers of like a township or a city, all these things with very blurry boundaries overlapping and my, everyone's uh, experience is locked inside of these containers, and so it's just tying emotion, emotionality to the landscape of the suburban world I came from. I don't know. It's it's these undescribable, ineffable feelings that that's why they compel me to write songs to try to put them in some sort of organized language. It's a very existence is just very chaotic. So it's, it's like a daunting task. It is. Yeah. Such is my burden. Do you guys? <laughs> Do you guys contribute any to the, any of the uh, initial initial music or lyrics to the to him or there, vice versa? We arrange <laughs> we arrange the songs, you know. Matt brings the chords and he he brings the lyrics. It's uh it's it's I mean, he 
writes the songs, and we, we put, uh, we, we do, uh, we, we add stuff to them, but it's, he's, got, he's the songwriter. I bring all the matter, and it's like this corpse laid out on a table, and then they just pump life and air and blood into it, and it just it becomes inflated and robust. Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's next for you guys? Like, you guys, I think... I think you've done a tour on how old, but uh, for now, are you guys going to write a new record? Anything? You said earlier you're writing new yeah. songs. Are you going to record soon? Or? Hopefully we'll get some demos, um, some rough ideas of the, uh, these uh, resuscitated corpses. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, uh, it's what, mid-December now, we're home until the end of January and we go back out for a month. Um, we just want to start demoing songs. We're ready to record again. We've got all this new stuff that's driving us nuts that we just want to that we just want to flesh out. And um, I mean, our our plan today and tomorrow and whenever in the future is just to keep just to keep writing and recording and playing shows for people. I mean, that's that's all we really care about right now. So that's what we're going to do. It seems to have some self-propelled momentum, so it's like we put something into motion and it's hopefully, I mean, it seems to be rolling itself along, which is very encouraging, um, with little resistance, you know, if anything it's picking up a little speed here and there, so that's really encouraging, so we don't have to worry about that as much, we can just kind of create and worry about that and just keep putting stuff out there with this kind of confidence that we have people that care about it, which is really necessary for me at least. It's very, we're very grateful for that. Um, what do you guys think you might do musically? Like, do you think you'll incorporate more electric guitar? And, uh, like, what about the lyrics? <laughs> you know, what do you think? You'll God willing. Um, ho I, I mean, hopefully there'll be some electric guitar. I mean, more and more. Um, what will my lyrics be about? It's not like I, I don't know how they're gonna be different. It's just yeah. I don't even know where to slice them up to say that that was then and yeah. this is now. I always write about the same things. I write about human pathos, like these, just like the pathetic conditions that we find ourselves in, but the, the beauty locked inside those, just our frailty and um, the burden of love and all these huge things that our bodies have trouble handling. Our, um, I write just co constant themes that I'm obsessed with, you know, memory and knowing what to do with it, um, the haunting kind of qualities of, of landscapes and landmarks, and um, so it, very thematic things that I, all, I will always return to, and uh, they're pretty, I hope they're pretty obvious in the, in the songs themselves. I don't know, what... But yeah, musically, uh, like we were talking about earlier, I think, uh, I think we're going to try and incorporate some new things in the next record. Yeah. That's his department. It's, it's all of <laughs> Smalls is going to start playing something yeah. new. We don't know what yet. Me too. It's actually... He invents instruments, which is pretty cool. We're, I, <laughs> so far, kind of teaming up on a. We're we're going. There'll be an, there'll be an invented instrument on our next record. Mark my words. <laughs> Rhythmically, Smalls is always extremely innovative. Brian with his bass lines. I mean, that's everyone's combined creative um, proclivity, every, like energy for it to be creative is is the juice. I mean, that's the power. All of it. There is a